Hello and welcome to Murder with Friends, the show where friends get together and talk about some of the darker sides of history. I'm your host, Grace Baldridge, and joining me today is the entire Murder with Friends team. Yes! We have my co-creator, Amir, and we have our awesome editors, Elle and Cassie. And what we're going to be doing on today's episode is sharing some campfire stories about cases, figures that have stuck out to us that maybe horrify us, maybe fascinate us. And for this segment, we're going to be going to you, Elle, because you found a really horrific crime and a really fascinating criminal in Angela Simpson. You want to tell us about her? Sure thing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> if I must. So uh, this didn't happen too long ago. This was in 2009, early August. Phoenix police got a call from a church that said they had a trash can on fire in their parking lot and they didn't know where it came from. So the police came and they found a body inside the trash can, but it was burned beyond recognition and dismembered. Also, the legs and arms had been cut off and they had to identify the victim through dental records. Turned out to be a man named Terry Neely. And then just by chance, this lady named Angela Simpson and her friend Cracker, I don't, I don't know his real name, but his name is Cracker, they committed a robbery and they got arrested on that charge. And then after the police had been asking around like the community near the church, they were pointed to Angela Simpson also, who had been associated with Terry Neely. They had seen them around the neighborhood, you know, in the past doing drugs, whatever. And so they found this apartment that they would also frequent. Once they went into the apartment, they basically found bleach, evidence of the crime, all this stuff had happened there. And so they looked into Angela and she was already in custody. So once they confronted her, she basically confessed right out. And I'm gonna throw to a video of that and an interview right afterwards. He said I did it. Yes. And he said he was there. Yes. If I told you who did it, how and why, and it did not involve him, would you let him go? I killed Terry by deceptively luring him into apartment 201, sitting him down and beating him with various objects until he was unconscious and then I slit his throat. Went back up, cut his legs off. He told on a righteous person years ago, so, and so he, he told me that. He was there for three days, right? Yes. What did you do during that time? Well, I, I killed him and cut him up. Did you pull out his teeth? Did you put a, a hammer into his head, put a nail in his brain? Yes. Was he alive during this? Some of it. Was he watching, looking at a mirror? Yes. Why'd you do that? Because I wanted him to see what he deserved. Angela, is this the first time you've done this? No. Will you admit that you've killed other people? Well, yes. You've killed other people. How many? That's irrelevant. I believe informants and child molesters should be killed, period. You think something's wrong with you? <laughs> I think something's wrong with the world that I live in, but um, according to other people, yes, something is wrong with me. Do you feel guilty? Guilty? For ridding the world of a snitch? No, I don't feel guilty. She says she was motivated to kill Terry because he had told her he was a snitch. Correct. What does she mean by a snitch? What, would, what was he telling that bothered her so much? Supposedly he was bragging to her that he was an informant, basically, that he would tell on people to the police and that they'd arrest them. The CI. And, right. And she specifically mentioned that he had told on somebody righteous Mm -hmm. But she never mentions who that is, and later she says that she doesn't know any of the people that he snitched on. And as it turns out, the police looked into it, and he's not actually a snitch. He was just lying the whole time. So she killed him for being a snitch when he wasn't a snitch. And the other thing is, is that Terry was handicapped. He was wheelchair bound. And so he was pretty recognizable around the neighborhood. He lived at an assisted living facility. And the last time anybody saw him was when he was leaving there. People just saw them together around the neighborhood, hanging right. out. And when they were asking about what happened with Terry, did anyone see anything? People started saying, oh, I think he hangs out with Angela Simpson. They're like, oh, convenient. She's already in custody. Asked mm -hmm. her question. She was like, oh, yep, you caught me. That's how it went down? Well, yeah, as you saw, the police had told her that Cracker had basically said that they had done it together. R was she together with Cracker romantically? I don't think so. I think they just committed the robbery together, but she later says that he had nothing to do with it. 
That's what she said in the confession that she was like, if I tell you that he had nothing to do with it, will you leave him alone? Another thing that sort of is very chilling about this case is that she speaks a lot to the press, very devoid of remorse. Mm -hmm. Is why? Do, do you think she's just feeling very self-righteous in that she committed this and she stands by her act? In the interviews that I've seen with her, um, some of them are a little bit more recent as well, mm -hmm. she absolutely stands by what she did, but at the same time, she recognizes that she should be put to death for her crime. W can you just break down her motivation a little bit here. Who is Angela Simpson, Elle? Why did you bring her into my life? <laughs> well, I think she is just a very self-righteous person. And actually, let me throw to another interview of a later interview after she was convicted. We can watch right now. He told me he was a snitch. He told you. On many occasions. If you believe him, do you think he really was a snitch? <laughs> Oops, if he wasn't. Have you killed other No, people? I've never killed anyone else. So that was something, this talk. Right. Time. Do you think that it was fair today? It was justice in that courtroom? No, I don't. Why? I should have gotten the death penalty. You know, I got a lot of family in prison, and uh, it's really not that much of a punishment to be sentenced to spend my life with my family. I don't regret killing him, no. I regret the fact that my co-defendants found it necessary to uh, divulge so much information to the detectives. They weren't actually with me during any of my crimes. So for them to say that they were to try to get lesser sentences was a little heartbreaking. I started being hospitalized at 10 years old. I have a mental history. Do you care that anyone feels sorry for you? Do you want anybody? Feel sorry for me? Yeah. No. You would not have that? I want no sympathy, no. Did you find it pleasurable or exciting or was, there, was this just, just a Just necessary. Women generally don't commit crimes this heinous. Right. Uh, you know, this is usually the domain of men. That's unfortunate. <laughs> you think more women? Oh yeah, equal opportunity, definitely. If you had that moment to live over again? I'd have kept him alive a week. Will you kill again? If the opportunity arises, I hope so. Okay, let's, we're done. Are you done? <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Angela. Good shit, dude. That's going to be crazy, isn't it? <laughs> That's going to be wicked. Make it look good, please. Oh, you're, you're going to put this on, too? Let's well, like, put the ending on. So that kind of directly relates to a lot of the questions you just asked. Yep. I don't, honestly, I don't know how real she is. And I, all I think that is that she does have mental issues. I think that's real. And I think that she has a lot of self-righteous motivations. And I also think that she is an attention whore in a way. Yes, I... She's a psychopath for sure. She's a psychopath, she's an attention whore, she has children. She didn't speak about her children in the interview when she was asked about it in that same interview. She's like, I'm not gonna speak about my kids. Yeah. Here's my theory, you guys know that I go all the way on conspiracy theories, so work with me, people. I think she did that interview with the hopes that she would become notorious, that she would get famous. Maybe there'd mm -hmm. be a Lifetime movie made about her. Maybe they'd, you know, sort of like what we saw with Eileen Warren, oh, she'd get the monster treatment, and that maybe she could kick back some of that money to her kids. Because in that same interview, where she is so stone cold, the only time you sort of see her break a little bit, where you recognize that there might be a beating heart, honestly, I mean, she's such a monster, you know? is when she's asked about her kids and mm -hmm. she says, I won't comment on my yeah. kids. How is it for you to be separated from that? I, I don't want to talk about my children. I can't do that. Yeah. So I'm wondering if, especially watching the end of that, where she's like, good shit, I'm wondering if maybe she thought there'd be some sort of a kickback if she made herself as infamous as possible. Right. That she, she could get money out of it. She's definitely creating a character for herself. And she even appeared on that show, Locked Up, uh, back in 2010, and you know, she puts on the same act. And I think it is an act. I, sh it's, it's eerily creepy. Like, the thing that attracted me to this case was the interview, because when I first heard the interview, I had only listened to it. I had no idea what she looked like. She's so calm, coherent, well-spoken, and like, completely cold. And it, it's amazing, and I, that's why I can only think that it's some of an act, somewhat of an act. The part that really screwed with me is that she made the, the guy look, look at himself in a mirror. Oh, I know. And that's, that's like from that classic horror movie. I forget what it's called, but yeah. same thing. And the other thing is, is that she, she won't talk about her kids, and she also won't talk about her past. The only thing she's ever said is that 
she had mental issues when she was a kid. But I have Damn. no idea what her motivation is besides the fact that she thinks snitches get stitches. But what, what she, is her life behind bars now? Does well, she is she going to her family like she seemed to think in? Well, yeah. she the, her family are the other women in jail. She's right. not like not a literal family, right. but her sisters basically. And if you watch the Locked Up episode, it does seem like she has family in prison. They're all friends, even if they get in fights. She made the comment about family in jail, but it's obviously her friends. But like her mom and dad, like there's obviously something to her childhood that right. I think it goes beyond a mental issue. I think it's a combination, like a lethal combination between yeah. how she was Probably. brought up. Probably, I, I imagine she was brought up in poverty and not in a good environment, but again, she won't talk about it, so you don't know. So it just leaves us to fill in the blanks and she's sort of filling in the blanks for us, which is exactly what she wants because that's how she can become infamous. If she sort of reclaims her own narrative and says, I'm right. just a monster, mm -hmm. accept it, we're more likely to talk about that than, for example, when we covered Eileen Warnos on this show, you can, you can do a full 20 minutes on her childhood and how she got to be there. She drove a nail into his head and pulled his teeth out. Like, what? would motivate you to do What's that sort of anger. When you're a sadist, you, you get off doing that kind of stuff. But it doesn't sound like she was sexually excited. You don't by have to it. be it is sadism doesn't have to be sexual in nature. Well right. here here's kind of a question I want to look at is usually these kind of crimes like the interviewer had mentioned is they are committed by men. These super violent kind of disgusting crimes. When women are serial killers it's usually poison, mm -hmm. something very subtle, and it's usually motivated by monetary or material gain. Mm -hmm. Or revenge, like or a revenge. passion killing. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this seems particularly different than a lot of women killers in the past. And I'm just curious, like, why, why is that? And why, why do you guys think that crimes are so differently committed by men and women? Look, I think a lot of it comes with your cultural upbringing, like girls are raised a certain way and guys are raised a certain way. In her instance, she wasn't raised like how we foresee, like how typical females are raised mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. She may have been raised in like such an abusive household that she was treated more like a, bo like a boy would have been treated mm -hmm. as opposed to a girl. I, I think what's particularly chilling about Angela as well is seeing her break from character. Mm -hmm. That, yeah. just to see her be like, oh, don't put this in the interview. I, I, I hate that sort of power and control that she has, which you, you see in the, the interview tapes of Eileen. Eileen doesn't have that. She's She is fully in her own, you know, mental psychosis. She is a sick person the day before Eileen Warnos was murdered. And then to, to see Angela have this restraint, have this control, I hate it because I don't, I, I almost want her to be completely crazy to rationalize why she would do such an unmotivated killing. Well, that's kind of goes back to what I was talking about. This is my theory. It's like most murderers or sadistic murderers and serial killers are motivated by power, regardless of whether they're psychotic or not. It's always about power. And when men commit serial murders and they rape or they dismember or torture, that is a form of power over somebody physically. And when a woman commits these murders and it's by poison they get, gain material things that is a form of power but it's a different kind of power and now Angela she is getting her power through the media through the way she presents herself and also just initially her power over a disabled man that she decided to That's torture. deep. I like that theory a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Guys, that was the case of Angela Simpson. Had you heard of her before? Have you seen her episode of, what was it, Locked Up? Please let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we'll see you next time on Murder with Friends.